Hey guys, welcome back to Dude We Can Fix It. In our last video, we removed the heads from this truck with a 5.3 liter LS engine, uh, which is the same procedure for the 4.8, 5.3, and 6.0 GM, Chevy, and GMC trucks. We dropped off the heads to the machine shop, and we can see that they have uh, went ahead and planed the surface out, machined it back nice and flat. Our leak was coming from this back corner here and there's still a couple of uh, blemishes on here but this entire area is all flat so it's just these isolated blemishes they also went ahead and steam clean this entire thing for us so it's nice and clean uh, it does come with a thin layer of oil on it so this will still have to be cleaned with some brake cleaner before we install it. We also have new valve stem seals in here. It's always a good idea to check and make sure that your keepers are all set in place on all of your springs. These all look good and these heads are ready to be reinstalled. As I said before, before you install these heads, make sure to clean this surface with some brake cleaner to make a nice, clean, dry mating surface for the head gasket. The last thing that I need to do before installing the new heads is I need to come in here and I need to clean all of the mating surfaces very well. I'm going to use some paint thinner and a brush, a scraper and a pick. I gotta get all this old gasket material out of there. Try not to let any of that enter the engine if at all possible and then finish it off with some brake cleaner. All right, now this is a very important part here, cleaning the cylinder head. Uh, the more you put into this, the better product you'll get out of it. So take your time, make sure you get this nice and clean. And if you do, as I say, and follow my instructions, you'll never have a problem due to a dirty cylinder head. Now, if your guide pins didn't come out with your cylinder heads, go ahead and take them out, clean them up, and set them aside with your cylinder heads. All right, so we'll set these aside and we will begin to clean our cylinder head. First, we'll start wire brush and some paint thinner. Just brush it on all over. Make sure you get plenty of paint thinner all over this head. Next, you'll need a straight edge scraper like this one, or if you have a gasket scraper, that would work as well. We're going to scrape every surface in four directions. So we'll scrape this way, that way, this way, and that way to get all of this material off. And then we'll brush it down again with paint thinner. All right, so now we can use a 15 16 socket on a half inch drive ratchet to rotate the engine. That will allow us to get some of these cylinder heads one at a time to top dead center. Once you get a top dead center like that, it will be much easier to clean the top of that piston with a brush. So now that we have this piston at top dead center, we'll take some more paint thinner and a wire brush and clean all the carbon deposit off of it. For that last little bit of stubborn deposits, once again, you can use your razor knife and just gently scrape them off the surface. You don't want to score up the top of your piston, so proceed with caution on this part. And voila, that's a clean piston. Now we'll just repeat this procedure for the other seven. So now that all of our pistons are clean and our cylinder head is clean, we're going to use some brake parts cleaner and a paper towel to finish cleaning the block and prepare it for the head. So we'll start with the piston that's all the way up. Go ahead and hose it down from top to bottom with some brake cleaner. I'll wipe the piston. 
and the area above it. You'll see that there's some dirt and grime that came off. So now let's rotate to the next piston that comes up. Bring it down. And we'll wipe. Wipe the whole area. You'll see it's dirty as well. A clean part of our paper towel. Rotate to the next piston. And repeat. So now that the block is nice and clean, we need to go ahead and clean up the head. Um, instead of just spraying brake cleaner all over it and then wiping it off, I don't like to do that because you can get fluid in here and when you flip this head over, it'll drain out and then you'll have uh, brake cleaner and oil and residue all over your nice clean surface and that will cause your head gasket to fail. So instead what I like to do is set this uh, face down on some cardboard or paper towels up until I'm ready to use it. That way I know it's nice and dry and it's not going to drip. And then I'll take a clean paper towel and spray some brake cleaner onto it and use this paper towel to carefully wipe the entire surface of the deck, trying not to tear the paper towel and leave any paper towel residue behind. You can see that there is some uh, oil left behind from the machining process. Just keep wiping until your paper towel comes back clean like this. And now you're ready to install it. Just be sure to remove any loose particles of paper towel. You can do this by dusting it lightly with a, another paper towel or by wiping it with a nice cloth rag. But also be sure that that does not leave any residue behind either. So now we're ready to install the head back onto the block. We'll take our two guide pins and reinsert them on the block side. If they don't go in on their own, we can gently tap them in with a hammer. Now you're going to need to put on some nice clean gloves. You don't want to do this barehanded because your skin naturally has oils in it or on it and you can contaminate the mating surface or the head gasket. So now that we have our cylinder heads clean, we have our two new head gaskets. If you look on here, it will say front. It'll say that on both sides. So as long as the front is facing the front of the vehicle, you're good. It'll either mount this way on this side, you can flip it over, and it'll mount that way on that side. This way, that way. These gaskets are universal on this truck. Now, unfortunately, I am missing two of my little guide pins, so I, don't, I only have enough to do one side and not both. So I just took two of these smaller bolts, cut the head off, and I got one in the back and one in the front. I'm going to use those as my guide pins instead. Hopefully you don't have to do that. Uh, my second set were stuck in the head and when I brought it to the machine shop he removed them but apparently he forgot to give them back to me and I forgot to ask about them. So this will work. We'll set that on there like that and then we'll set the head on top of it. Make sure that your long narrow intake ports are facing inside on the engine. So now we'll take our head gasket. Once again, it says front. That's going to be facing the front of the vehicle. We'll set this over our guide pins. Now we will carefully set our head on top of that and try to line up the guide pins on this as well. There it is. I just gotta wiggle a little bit to get it to seat in correctly. All right, so now that we see the sequence, we'll go ahead and start putting our head bolts in and just starting them by hand, just finger tight. And go ahead and start practicing your sequence. So you got one, two, three, four, 
four, five, and six. Seven. That's eight. Nine. And ten. Let's go ahead and set these in place. It's eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. And fifteen. Alright, so now we need to go ahead and begin snugging these bolts in. And once again, we'll do this in the same sequence. You may hit a little bit of resistance as you get past the thread locker that comes pre-installed on the new head bolts. Don't worry about that, just keep threading past it until the head of the bolt is snug against the head. And this one here is our last one, number 10. All right, so now they're all snug. We'll move on to step one, which is one through 10, torque to 22 foot-pounds. Starting with number one again. Moving to number two. Number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, across to number eight. Number nine, and number 10. So now we're ready to move on to step B, which is turn them all 90 degrees in the same sequence. We'll start with number one again, 90 degrees. Now we go to number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number Six. Number seven. Number eight, which is going to be fun. All right. Number nine. And finally, number 10. Now we have one final iteration on these bolts, and that is to turn them 70 degrees. Same sequence. All right, so all we have left now are bolts 11 through 15, which are just getting torqued to 22 foot-pounds. So first, I'll snug them up 
these are 10 millimeters. Now that these are all snug, we're going to tighten them down to 22 foot-pounds, starting in the center and working our way up. Now we're ready to go ahead and get our crossover plugs and our crossover. If you still have O-rings in here, now is a good time to remove them. Now locate your bag with injector seals and your crossover O-rings. You'll have one of two types. One type has a recess here. You'll pop this O-ring down in there. There we go, now we're ready to install our crossover. If you don't have these recesses, you'll use this guy instead. Now we'll go ahead and put our plugs in the back. And our crossover pipe in the front. Make sure that this nipple is on the driver's side. At this point, I do want to caution you not to drop anything in any of your intake holes because then you will have to take the head back off and get a new head gasket. At this point, go ahead and start putting your push rods back in. Wiggle them around, make sure that they are seated at the bottom. The consensus is it doesn't matter which push rod goes where or which way it goes in. However, I always put them back exactly the way that I found them. So each push rod in its original location and in its original orientation. You don't need to be quite as meticulous as I am. So if you get them mixed up, don't sweat it. It'll be all right. So now I'm going to rotate the engine to see if I can find a uh, top dead center and bottom dead center on any of these push rods. Now this one's raising up. So these two are now as low as they will go. Let's go grab our rocker arm assembly. So now we'll set our rocker assembly in place. We'll start all these bolts by hand. And now we will gently snug them up. All right, so as you come through here, make sure that your rocker arm is centered on your spring and that your push rod is securely mounted inside of there. Then we'll just get these to where they're snug. Don't force it. All right, so you do not want to be compressing these springs by tightening down these screws. So these rocker arm bolts are supposed to be torqued down to 22 foot-pounds, but we want to make sure that we're torquing them whenever the spring is fully elongated and not being compressed. So that means that the push rod needs to be in the innermost position or the downmost position. So we know these two are in the down position, so we'll go ahead and torque these. These two also appear to be in the innermost position. 
and I have a few on the other side that I can go ahead and torque. This spring seems to be fairly elongated and not compressed. This one's compressed. Um, those two don't look very compressed, but I'm going to go ahead and rotate the engine and see if I can see the movement. And whenever these reach the top of their stroke, I'll go ahead and torque those down. It appears that these three are all at the top. And perhaps this one as well. So I'm going to go ahead and retorque this entire side. Since these have already been torqued, it won't hurt to torque them down again. Now I will continue to rotate the engine. Here we go. These springs are compressing here. Now that this spring has reached the bottom of its stroke, I'll go ahead and torque everything once again. I'll continue to rotate the engine until this spring is at its bottom. Now these are both at the top of their stroke, so we're back to where we began. I will go through and torque everything down one last time. Now we're ready to put our valve covers back on. I cleaned them up and put new gaskets in them. So now we're ready for our exhaust. We need to install our new exhaust manifold gaskets. What we'll do is pop a couple bolts in like that. Now we're going to put all the spark plugs back in. All right, so we can actually take this intake gasket off. And the new style gasket actually mounts to the block instead of to the intake. So we'll just clean these surfaces off. And get it ready to install. All right, so this gasket, the surfaces are nice and clean, has these little tabs here that sit over this bolt and that bolt. Get it in place and then just push it in and down. So that's how these sit on there. If you have the other style gasket, they'll just clip onto the bottom of the intake. Now we need our knock sensor harness. So normally your knock sensor harness will sit right here. However, with this gasket, I don't know that it's going to uh, fit that well. So I'm going to route it back behind here.
All right, so this intake is held down by 10 eight millimeter bolts. You wanna go ahead and start getting those put on. Uh, make sure that your wiring harness is routed correctly. Make sure that your EVAP line, it goes underneath your fuel rail. You need to connect this hose right here. There we go. All right, our 10 intake manifold bolts are nice and tight. We'll hook up our brake booster over here. Just make sure we go ahead and connect our barometric pressure sensor. Tighten this down a little bit. Our wiring harness. Our knock sensor connector. Very nice. Go ahead and connect our fuel line. All right, let's go ahead and put this keeper on our fuel line. Let's reconnect our EVAP solenoid. Need to put our keeper back in. Pop it on and push it over. That's locked. We have electrical connector there. This must go to the alternator. Ready for our coil packs over here. We can go ahead and plug in all of our fuel injectors. Then we can plug in our fuel injectors on the other side as well. Plugged in our mass airflow sensor. Need to reconnect this hose here. All right, now we need to connect this hose here for our, looks like a PCV. Our positive crankcase ventilation valve. Hooks there and hooks in the back. Just like that. And now we are ready for our coil pack assemblies. So now we'll put our coil packs back in place. You need a 10 millimeter deep socket to tighten up these five studs. Now we can reconnect our harness and connect all of our spark plug wires. Now we'll reinstall this plate here with three 10 millimeter bolts. So now we're going to reattach our power steering pump and alternator bracket with these four 15 millimeter bolts and this one shorter 15 millimeter bolt that will be going in this location down here. Let's be sure to reconnect our coolant temperature sensor. Right down there. Maybe hard to see, but there it is. Coolant temperature sensor is hooked up. This is bolted back on. We're ready to remount the alternator with these two slightly shorter 15 millimeter bolts. What we're going to do first is tap these grommets outwards. That will make it much easier to get the alternator in there. Set the alternator in place. 
and thread our two bolts through. And we'll need a 10 millimeter socket to attach our charging lead. Now we can put our protective boot over the top and also be sure to connect the alternator electrical connector. All right, that's all hooked up. Now we can hook up our lower radiator hose. And next we can hook up our upper radiator hose. We can run this hose to the bottom side of the throttle body here. I'll show you in just a second where that hooks up at. That hose hooks up right there. And don't forget there's this other hose in there. So those are all hooked up. Double check for any other EVAP hoses that you might have out in the wild over here. Um, you can also go ahead and put your wiring harnesses back in these clips. Alright, so now we can go ahead and recover our serpentine belt and route that. Then we use a 16 millimeter socket to move the tensioner over. And if you forgot how your belt was routed, there's a handy guide right here on your fan shroud. All right, we're just about done. Put the air filter back in and route the air hose assembly. So we'll need a flathead screwdriver to tighten up our hose clamp. Now we need to tighten up our T25 screws that hold the air box together. Plug in our mass airflow sensor. And now we'll place our engine cover back in the clips in the rear and use an eight millimeter socket to tighten down the bolt. So now we need to go ahead and fill our coolant system. I'll be using a mix of 50% distilled water and 50% antifreeze concentrate. It's a pretty impressive drafting noise. All right, coolant system is full. Now we will cycle the key several times to allow the fuel system to primer since we opened it up and allowed air to enter. successful startup. But that's how you put new head gaskets on a 5.3 liter Chevy, which is also the same procedure for a 4.8, 5.3, and 6.0 Chevy or GMC engine. Thanks for watching. Please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and tune in for more videos. And as always, dude we can fix it.